For months, we've been reporting about how the rebel Free Syrian Army was pushing further into Damascus, uh, that there's been so much fighting between the Syrian army and the rebels on the outskirts of Damascus, the suburbs of, of Damascus. Here you have a situation where this was a blast, a huge, a massive blast that went off very, very close to the, uh, to, to the Ba'ath Party headquarters in the capital, in Damascus, in the seat of power. It was a massive explosion. Uh, it hurled cars through the air. Uh, the, the, the aftermath pictures that we saw, the video, uh, showed what a horrific and chaotic scene it was. Uh, opposition activists telling us that this was an explosion that went off close to hospitals and schools, that many children died as a result. Uh, but then you have the finger pointing that's been going on uh, as a result of this. You have the Syrian government coming out and very plainly saying this was Al-Qaeda uh, and these were insurgent fighters that was behind this blast. Uh, and then you have other opposition groups that blame the al-Assad regime. Other opposition groups say that no matter who perpetrated this terrible crime, that it must be condemned. But it just goes to show how much the fighting has intensified, how much the violence has intensified in Damascus. And just a short time after this initial blast that we reported on, there were two other blasts that were uh, reported to us by activists that happened in a Damascus neighborhood called Barza. Uh, now, it's still unclear exactly what happened after those blasts, but we're told that clashes ensued between rebel free Syrian army fighters and Syrian regime army members as well. So a really chaotic situation intensifying getting more violent in and around Damascus. And as you said, the death toll yesterday as a result of all the violence across the country in this unceasing and brutal civil war was at least 210. Zane? Is the Assad regime getting stronger or weaker? Right now, Zane, it looks very much like a stalemate. Uh, what, we've, what we've heard uh, is that, uh, you know, it's basically a seesaw battle that's been going on. You have areas in the country uh, where the rebels say that they are controlling the territory, and then you have parts of the country where the al-Assad regime and his forces are still very much in control. They have the firepower, uh, they have the air power as well, the warplanes and the helicopters, and that helps them. Uh, so as much as the rebels can push into Damascus and other areas and parts of the country where the al-Assad regime nominally still has control. The fact of the matter is the al-Assad regime still has the firepower, the munitions, to be able to, every time the rebels come in, take over a neighborhood, uh, get themselves more into a specific area, to push them out yet again. So right now it's just grinding on, just churning on. It doesn't look as though either side really has the upper hand, and that's what worries people so much. And we must say that once again, all this is happening amidst the backdrop of a meeting that's going on in Cairo, the opposition National Syrian Coalition meeting in Cairo for two days, trying to come up with some sort of a solution or framework to see if they will or will not negotiate with the Al-Assad regime if they will or will not talk to Russian officials. But again, these talks just showing all the deadlock around what's going on in Syria and not having any impact whatsoever as far as the violence on the ground in Syria.